Hello everyone, I want to welcome you to the State of the Community with the Prosper ISD and the Town of Prosper. Uh, we are doing things a bit differently this year because of COVID, but we hopefully you can enjoy this online to find out all about important and exciting things that are happening in our town and our community. This annual event started last year as a partnership between the Town of Prosper, the Prosper Independent School District, and the Prosper Chamber of Commerce. We have a lot of great information to share with you this evening. And in just a few minutes, we'll welcome Dr. Holly Ferguson and Mayor Ray Smith to give you an update on the school district and the town. Thanks for being with us tonight. Please be sure to consider donating to the Prosper Education Foundation to support their scholarship programs or to, or to the We Prosper Together campaign to support our local nonprofit organizations, which are Cornerstone North Central Texas, Neighbors Nourishing Neighbors, Love Packs Prosper, Prosper Ladies Association. You can see at the bottom of the screen the websites to go to to join, to donate. Also, if you have any questions for our speakers, please email soc at prospertx.gov. We will be answering questions as time allows at the end of our presentations. If we're unable to get to your questions in the time allotted, we will have a member of the town or the PISD email you back. Also, please be sure to react to the presentation and also share with your friends. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Holly Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson began her career with Prosper ISD in 1998. I really think she was about 12 years old then because there's no way she can be that old. Uh, she was an elementary school teacher. She has since served as a campus principal, executive director of curriculum and instruction, assistant superintendent of curriculum and instruction, and for the past three years, associate superintendent. After receiving her bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies and a master's in education administration from the University of North Texas, Ms. Ferguson completed her doctorate in educational leadership at Texas A&M Commerce. She also worked for the Frisco ISD as a teacher, ESL cluster teacher, reading interventionist, and assistant principal. Dr. Ferguson and her husband, Frisco Fire Department Captain David Ferguson, are the parents of two children, Cade, a 2020 Prosper High School graduate, and Ty, who is a freshman at the school. Real quick about Dr. Ferguson. I've known Dr. Ferguson since 2007, when my daughter was attending first grade in Prosper. I had the pleasure of opening doors as a smiling dad for all the students. Dr. Ferguson knew every kid's name, every brother and sister's name, the parent's name. She could name where they were from. She even knew the pet's name. I promise if you ask her, she could probably remember my dog's name. But also, I saw Dr. Ferguson when my daughter was leaving Rucker and my son was still in third grade. I saw Dr. Ferguson name every kid, every child's, she named every child by memory. She was giving awards out, called them all out by name. She mispronounced one child's name, but she corrected it and got it right. I'd like to, I'd like to now ask my friend, Dr. Holly Ferguson, to step up and speak with y'all. Dr. Ferguson. Thank you, Mr. Duggar. What an honor it is to be in front of you tonight. I wish that we were in person, but obviously the circumstances that we're under during this time have, have caused us to kind of change things a little bit. So thank you for that very gracious introduction and um, you gave me probably more credit than I deserve, but thank you very much. I also would like to thank the Town of Prosper and also the Prosper Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event and giving us this opportunity to really get out to the community and be able to share all of the great things that are going on in Prosper ISD and the Town of Prosper, as you'll hear from Mayor Smith in just a little bit. So the first thing that I want to start with is our amazing school board. So many times they are faced with some of the most difficult decisions, rather it be zoning or what we need to do with specific situations, and they always come to the table with a servant's heart. And so I want to thank all of our school board members uh, our president, Mr. Jim Bridges, our vice president, Mr. Mays Davenport, Mrs. Deborah Smith, our secretary, 
Dina Dixon, school board member, Jana Thompson, school board member, Bill Beavers, school board member, and Kelly Cavender, school board member. Such an honor to be able to work alongside these fine leaders, and they certainly have a servant's heart specifically for our students and our staff, and I can't thank them enough for all that they do. And they get such a large paycheck, as we know, which is zero dollars every single month. So when we talk about Prosper ISD and we really think about what is important, we want to talk about the vision. And it's about being grounded by our traditions. And I'm going to unveil actually a video tonight that's really going to take us on a journey of Prosper ISD, where we were to where we are now. And so our vision is very much in alignment with being true to who we are, but also remembering that we have kids who are not even here with us yet in Prosper ISD, but they're coming, and those will be our new beginnings. Our parents will, that move here will be our new beginnings, and our staff will be new beginnings. So now, this is the big reveal for Prosper ISD, the traditions video. I hope you enjoy. Our culture, our traditions. These are the foundations upon which Prosper ISD has built its identity. An identity of excellence, of strength, of always putting our students first. Over the last 12 decades, thousands of talented, hardworking students have spent their formative years in the classrooms of Prosper ISD. It's here they've learned not only how to read and write, but to be creative and courageous, passionate and driven, kind and generous. Prosper ISD got its start back in 1902, when 100 children of all ages attended school in a two-story wood building with no desks, no pencils, no running water. Only three teachers with a passion for educating our future. Fast forward to today. Over 19,000 students learning at 19 campuses, a state-of-the-art medical lab, a greenhouse, an auditorium, and over 1,300 teachers, each just as committed to preparing future leaders as our original three teachers. Teachers like 2019 Elementary School Teacher of the Year, Jennifer Brown of Rutger Elementary. Rock Hill High School Orchestra Director, Ronald Planks and Meredith Hamilton, pre-calculus teacher at Prosper High. These three are dedicated to developing confidence, grit, and curiosity in their students. A dedication to putting children first, shared by all Prosper ISD teachers, coaches, administrators, and staff throughout the decades. It's this unwavering dedication and commitment to excellence that has made Prosper ISD one of the very best school districts in Texas for academics, fine arts, and sports, and a place where futures flourish. We have National Merit Scholars and Ivy Leaguers, musicians and poets, blockers and defenders. But our commitment to excellence isn't just for the children of Prosper ISD. It's for the community as a whole. We ensure every tax dollar is used wisely and efficiently. And that's why Prosper ISD has consistently earned the highest rating of superior achievement for fiscal responsibility from the Texas Education Agency. Only by serving as good fiscal stewards can we continue to provide a high quality education for all students in Prosper ISD while holding on to the traditions and pride that is Prosper ISD. Prosper ISD, grounded by tradition, soaring to new beginnings. Every time I watch that video, I tend to get chills because it really does take you on a journey through the history of all things Prosper ISD. And when I think about the, the things that we've accomplished over the years, the reason that we've been able to accomplish those things is because of the people. It's the community. It's what we are about in Prosper, Texas, but also in Prosper ISD. So it's truly an honor when we think about all of the great people who have come before us and all of the people who will come after us. 
So the mission of Prosper ISD, we want to develop and graduate motivated, academically prepared individuals. I always say that we're in the graduation business because what we want is to be able to really give a high level of education with a high level of excellence so that there are multiple, and I do mean multiple opportunities for our students as they step outside of our walls of our high schools and they go on. And I want there to be a sense of pride, a sense of tradition. And so when they look back on their time in Prosper ISD, rather it was one year, it was 13 years, it, it is fond memories that are of pride and tradition and really of that they could not have been in a better place to receive the education that they have received, nor could they have been in a better community. So let's talk about a lot of the traditions that we have. And as Mr. Duggar mentioned, we've had to kind of revamp some things, whether it's this event or it's our senior citizen event. This is so very important. And I love this event, especially when we can get together in the community room and have a, a fabulous lunch provided by our career and technical education culinary students. But this year was a drive-through, um, but we still gave that experience and really honoring those people in our community who really have brought us to the place that we are. So it was so exciting to be able to connect with them, but to also see our students in action and the way that they engage with adults. So many times I think now in this uh, media, social media world and technology world that we're in, kids don't always take the time to really recognize the world around them. But I'm here to say that in Prosper ISD, our students do, and they showed that during this event and so many other events. I wanna also thank our director of athletics Valerie Little so we had our Hall of Honor this is our second event um, the second year to do this and it is such a great opportunity for us to really tie to our past and really honor those athletes who have taken us from one place to the next you see in front of you um, the 2008 football team which that was a moment and it doesn't seem like it was that long ago but it actually was and to be able to have those individuals come back to be honored, to be really represented at such a fine banquet that Coach Little has put on to really let them know that the legacy that they left has meant so very much to our Prosper ISD. I can't thank her enough for making that a tradition, and it's one that I look forward to each and every year. We also have the class of 2020, and as Mr. Duggar said, this class of 2020 was pretty special to me because the students that came through at that time in 2007, they were the class of 2020, which was my first uh, principal job. And so many of those students I had at Rucker Elementary, one of those students very important to me was my own son. And so really, how do we get all of those K-12 students back together to be able to celebrate one another? And it's a tradition that we want to hold on to, even with the addition of Rock Hill High School and us having a graduating class from Rock Hill and also from PHS to be able to truly honor those students who have gone their entire educational career in Prosper ISD as a K-12 student. We actually give a special cord at graduation for those students who've gone all the way through our school system. So the 2020 graduation was another, yet another redesign, but it was probably one of our finest moments in Prosper ISD, even in the midst of a pandemic. Those of you who were able to come out to the graduation, we were able to honor 812 graduates, which is the largest graduating class that we've ever had. And they were the last graduating single high school graduating class out of Prosper High School. The night was phenomenal and we did it with Prosper pride and really honored the traditions, the past, all of the wonderful things that have happened through the lives of these students, which is what we will commit to and continue to do. Rather, we have two high schools or five high schools in our future. So we always honor all of our sports and athletics and our band, fine arts areas, and we've always done a time-honored tradition of Meet the Eagles. But this year we were able to add another great time-honored tradition, or what will become a time-honored tradition, of Meet the Blue Hawks, which was so fun to be able to see our second high school really emerge and to be able to see our student athletes and our fine arts students being able to really be showcased and honored for all of the great things that they're doing in Prosper ISD.
Our culture is probably one of the most prized possessions in all of Prosper because it's not about how many um, great scores we've gotten on state testing, although that is important. We want those things for our students because we have high academic excellence. But it's about the story. The story that gets told about Prosper ISD is what brought many of you here to Prosper, Texas. It wasn't because of the fine amenities, but what you heard was the story of the school district. You heard the story of a specific teacher. You heard the story of a superintendent or a principal or maybe a bus driver. And those stories brought you to this diamond, this diamond that we have in this town and in this ISD. And our culture is only as healthy as the people who are within it. And I am here to tell you that we have the absolute best people in the nation who are educating and supporting our kids and our families and now more than ever with the pandemic and the things that we have going on what I see is love care nurturing and still a high level of commitment to excellence and to taking care of one another this is probably one of my favorite pictures um, and probably one of my favorite moments although I've had a lot since I've taken over as superintendent but this is dr. Greg Bradley and he is our deputy superintendent and I've had the fine honor of being able to work along him for the last nine years and so he did a Hamilton impersonation to actually introduce me and at convocation so I didn't know that he could sing but I soon learned that he can actually sing and he can do it extremely well and it was a huge hit with all of our our staff and it was a fun moment and it was such a fun moment because we had all been and kind of locked away from one another and for him to really bring that level of energy and connection to our community our school community it was a moment that I'll never forget so I truly thank him thank him for his leadership too he's an absolutely outstanding leader and we're so fortunate to have him in Prosper ISD so another thing that looked a little bit different was teacher of the year but I will say it was really fun so we actually went to the homes of all of our teachers and staff members and support personnel in Prosper ISD and Mrs. Bernadette Gerace who is our director of recruitment retention designed all of this along with the Prosper Education Foundation and it was such a great celebration to be able to see all of these great educators and they were so honored because they had been locked away for so many months for all of these people to show up and do a, a car line basically by their homes so I want to make sure that you know who these individuals are and you will see that they play various roles in Prosper ISD because every single person matters So every month, you may or may not know this, but we have a program and it's called Star Polisher and it is actually sponsored by the Prosper Education Foundation. And as you know tonight, if you'd like to contribute, this is a great organization to contribute and donate to. So what they do is every single month, there is a teacher who is selected from every campus and then we go out and actually today was the day for the month of January where we go out to the campus and we surprise the uh, staff member who has been selected for this award. They're given um, an award to hang in their classroom and they're also given a hundred dollar gift card to Office Depot which is always a great surprise but the really cool thing is is that this is done in front of other staff members and students and when we talk about honoring traditions in the work of our great educators this is such a, a great moment for them and it really helps remind us of why we all got into education in the first place because these are passionate dedicated educators educators who truly make a difference each and every day within our classrooms. So I've had a very fun opportunity this year, even with the pandemic, to be able to bring our superintendent's council together. And you want to talk about some smart kids with some great ideas and amazing leadership skills. It's these students. They are 9th through 12th graders who come from Rock Hill High School as well as PHS, Prosper High School. And they have challenged me. They have pushed me. They have made me a better leader. So I, um, I hope that at some point in time you all get a chance to connect with these great kids that are sitting right here in our very own community. 
So let's talk a little bit about kind of the numbers and the facilities that we have. So our existing campuses right now, we currently have 12 elementary schools on the ground. And in 2007, not too long ago, we had three elementaries. And it was the first time that Prosper ISD had ever made their students go to a specific school based on their address and where they lived in Prosper or the other municipalities that we serve. So we're now at 12 elementary schools. We have four middle schools on the ground with Rushing Middle School being our newest middle school. And then we have two high schools, Rock Hill High School and Prosper High School, as you know. I want to take a moment just to thank the leaders on these campuses, our principals, our assistant principals, what they have done through the just enormous growth and the multiple transitions that we have experienced, whether it's from one elementary to the next or from one middle school to the next. And certainly the biggest impact that a, a school district ever feels is the open of the second high school and I want to tell you that our our leaders have done an absolutely phenomenal job of really helping our community our school community our staff our students embrace that shock that sometimes comes with transition and movement so just to give you a little bit of perspective of where Prosper ISD is in August, when we opened our doors on August 12 2020 we had 18,706 students as of yesterday we have 19,523 students. Just over the holiday break, when we returned in January, we brought on about 200 extra students. And that is absolutely probably the highest number of enrollment that we've had whenever we've transitioned from the holiday break back into the new year. And people are coming here because of our staff, our students, our community. And so it is, it's so exciting. And sometimes you may think, well, gosh, the growth must be daunting. It must be very difficult. Not at all. These are 19,523 opportunities to make a difference and to make a community stronger, a state stronger, and a nation stronger because of the kids and the families that are moving to prosper. So our current enrollment, you can see our building capacity, I have that listed out by all of the different campuses that we have, and those are our elementary campuses. But what I wanted to give you is a breakdown because this year we've had students both educated in an in-person, which is our traditional way to educate students, but we've also had them in a virtual setting. And so I wanted you to see where the numbers are kind of falling out by campus. So you can see, for example, if I use Baker Elementary, their capacity is 750 students. Current enrollment in person is 676, and then that current enrollment in virtual is 287. These numbers probably changed quite a bit actually this week because on the 19th, um, a Tuesday, a Tuesday, sorry, we brought in 600 more students who came back to in-person from virtual. So those numbers that you're looking at, just know that those were from January 8th numbers. Um, so they have changed just a little bit. You can see our middle schools there and then the continuation of our elementary schools. And then you can see the breakdown of our high schools on this last slide. Um, what we're seeing is more of a trend that on the south side of the district, we have more students who are choosing the virtual setting or parents choosing the virtual setting. And then on the north side of the district, we see a higher number of students who are actually in person. Either of those choices is fine and we're receiving attendance credits for every single one of those kids because they're enrolled in Prosper ISD. Sometimes people have the misconception that we don't get as much money as a school district for the virtual students, and that certainly is not the case. We get uh, funding for all students, whether they're virtual or in person. So I wanna talk about the bond money that we have and the summer projects that we have done. And so we passed a $1.3 billion bond, which was one of the biggest um, in the state of Texas. And so I want you to know exactly what we've done with those funds. So at Prosper High School, we've done some upgrades as far as carpet, um, our library furniture, and then our turf on the baseball field. And then we also outfitted every single classroom with TVs that replaced outdated Promethean boards or smart boards. We also at Reynolds, uh, which served as our original high school and the turf had become very 
dated in that facility. We actually have brand new turf in that facility now for our athletes as well as the weight room and then you can see the library. So really trying to strike that balance between the athletics and the academics, making sure that we're hitting all fronts and that every student is getting some type of uh, benefit to that bond money. And then we also at Rucker to improve actually the security and safety of that building, we made a back hallway so that the students can easily and safely move from one location to the other within the building and then that way that secured vestibule is truly secured. And then we did updates to the restrooms at Rucker Elementary. So let's talk about growth because my goodness it is here and as you all have moved here it has added to our growth which is, again I call them opportunities. I don't call it challenge or daunting. It is an opportunity. Every single student that we get and every single family. So you can see that our growth from 2000 2001 to 2019 to 2020 is astronomical. And I want to draw your eyes in really close on the 2018-2019 and the 2019-2020. That was a huge jump that occurred. And I'm going to say that that, uh, that occurred because of what was happening with building and growth and development in the town of Prosper and the other municipalities that we also connect with. And so because of the different opportunities that we have within each of the towns or cities that we're connected with, that also brought families here. But again, the education typically is the number one answer on why a parent says that they chose Prosper. So I want to show you just in the DFW the new home ranking report and you can see that we're number two although the little bit of a misconception on there because if you look at annual starts we are in the number two slot if you look at annual closings on homes we're in the number two slot but close to the number one the inventory that's available and then the VDL that's vacant developed lots and so you can see our numbers there but I want you to see the future. So I'm going to show you a number that's going to take you into the future, and we have 20,537 future. So that is a huge impact to a school district, which will continue for many, many years to come. We probably have at least 15 more years of rapid growth before we will start leveling out um, and really get some stability with that growth. So this is a map of our school district, and you can see we span over into McKinney, the city of McKinney, the city of Frisco, city of Salina, parts of Aubrey, um, Denton area, and then of course Prosper is the hub or the center, we'll call it the heart, right, of Prosper ISD. So you can see we have 42 actively building subdivisions. I'm going to let that sink in for just a minute. 42 actively building subdivisions. And then we have 12 future subdivisions within Prosper ISD boundaries. And groundwork is currently underway on roughly 1,690 lots in 10 subdivisions. That's crazy growth. But it's crazy growth that's exciting because that means that we get to educate kids and make a better tomorrow for them. So I want you to look at the 10-year forecast and you can see the 2020-2021, this is a breakdown by grade level and you can see the numbers and how they're trending as our students get older. Um, right now, on this report, we were at 19,074. I want to take your eyes down to 2030, 2031. We will have 43,152 students is what they're projecting. And that is in the, a matter of 10 years. 10 years, and we're going to go from 19,000 to 43,000. So everybody buckle up, because it's going to be a fun ride, and we're all in it together. So let's talk about our elementary campuses that are coming online. We'll be opening two elementary campuses in the fall, August of 2021. And those schools are Mike and Janie Reeves Elementary, and that's actually located in the city of McKinney. And it will relieve Baker Elementary, which also sits in the city of McKinney. 
That is in the Auburn Hills subdivision, which is a fast growth area. And so we're looking forward to opening Mike and Janie Reeves. And Mike and Janie Reeves are longtime Prosper residents who really contributed and gave back through volunteers, school board, volunteering and giving their time. And so we certainly want to honor that great family. We have Mrs. Jerry Bryant Elementary. And Mrs. Jerry Bryant uh, was a resident, but she was also the very first lady on the Prosper ISD school board. And she served from 1970 to 1975. It's been really fun to connect with both of these families and talk about those traditions and the history and the things that really what their family members did to contribute and give back to Prosper ISD. Mrs. Jerry Bryan Elementary will be located on the west side of our district and it will relieve some of the growth that's impacting us through the wind song development. We just recently purchased with board approval the Mayhard facility that's located on First Street. And that's gonna give us an extension and some growth and capacity for our administration building. We are not slated to actually build an administration building until 2028. And so as you can see, we're probably not gonna be able to hold because our current facility located on 7th Street is at capacity. And so this is going to give us a chance to really be able to give back to the community too, because this is such an iconic um, business that has been in Prosper for many years and to be able to really take that, freshen it up and make it have purpose again, to me is just such a win. So I truly appreciate the school board having that vision to look at how they could give back to the community by making this facility new again. So 2024, 2025 campuses. So we'll have 15 elementary schools, five middle schools, and then three high schools, because we actually will break ground on our third high school this August, September um, to start building that so that it can open up in 2024. So excellence is a standard that we hold high every single second of every single day that we have in Prosper ISD. We were named once again the top 100 places to work for the seventh year in a row. So we're very excited and certainly honored by this high honor that's given by the Dallas Morning News. We have uh, something that's coming that I think is going to be a huge benefit to our parents and our students. We are moving to offering 30 dual credit hours to our high school students and what that means is that they can get 30 hours. So that's basically clicking off the first year of college before they will ever enter a university. We know that research shows that with 30 hours, the student has a better likelihood of finishing out a four-year degree. And I'm telling you what, parents, as a parent who's now currently paying college tuition, you will thank us because the price point on dual credit courses is way cheaper than when your child goes off to a university. So to only pay for three years of college versus a year, um, that first year that the kids will go, gosh, I can't even tell you what a cost savings this is. So I truly appreciate the support of our Prosper ISD School Board to make this dream become a reality. Our AP, which is our advanced placement, we are on the district honor roll, and there were only 17 districts earned this distinction in the state of Texas, and we were only one of two. So Frisco was the other ISD, and Prosper ISD were the only two to, to receive this award. And so it's such a high honor because you can see it's only 250 school districts across U.S. and Canada. So our college recruiting, this is another new thing that we have that's coming. So there are a ton of student athletes and we want our students plugged in. We want them being connected to the campus. But what happens with student athletes many times, our phenom student athletes who are going to a division one school, they're highly recruited. Uh, colleges are coming after them. But we have a lot of student athletes who can sit in maybe a lower level D1 opportunity or or a Division II opportunity, and that's money that sometimes gets left on the table. So if we can pair academics along with that athletic ability, we can get more money on the table for college, which is another cost savings for our parents and our students. And it gives our kids purpose. It gives them what they're going after. And so we've actually hired an individual who will be helping to be that liaison and that person who will sit in the middle to help those student athletes reach that next level. And that will be for our female athletes as well as our male athletes at both Prosper High School and Rock Hill High School. 
So the niche ratings, we are in the top 2.5%. Probably many of you are familiar with this website because many families go to this just to find out about a school district when they're looking to move across the country um, or across the world. And so this is a great website to really highlight the great things that are going on in Prosper ISD. Our National Merit Scholars, this is an excellent, excellent program. Our National Merit Semifinalists, we had six this year, and we had National Merit Commended Scholars at 16. And so we want to see that number continue to grow and all of the things that we're doing with our academic programs and just our academics overall will continue to push that number higher, and we want to continue to see those kids reach that highest level because this also means money for college. So I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. I'm looking forward to answering some questions in just a little bit. But right now, I'm going to turn it back over to Kenneth Duggar, our MC. Thank you, Dr. Ferguson. Real quick, I want to make sure everybody knows that this is being recorded and will be available via the town and school district websites and also Facebook pages. Uh, now I'd like to welcome Mayor Ray Smith. Mayor Smith has lived in Prosper since 2005. In 2006, Ray served on the Home Rule Charter Committee, which wrote the charter that dictates how our town is governed. He was elected to the Prosper Town Council in 2007 and elected mayor in 2010. He was appointed in 2004 to serve, he was served as the president of the Economic Development Corporation and continues to serve as a board member. In 2016, he was elected to serve on the North, Te North Central Texas Council of Government Executive Board and currently serves as a president. He is also an alternate member of the Regional Transportation Council. He is currently the chair of the Collin College Foundation Board of Directors and a member of the Meals on Wheels of Collin County Board of Advisors. Mayor Smith is a graduate of Baylor University and is market president with Farmers Bank and Trust. Ray has been married to his beautiful wife, Lena, for 30 years. Together, they have raised three sons and are currently raising two grandsons. Before I turn this over to Mayor Smith, please don't forget to like and react and comment on the, on the post. Uh, my friend, Mayor Ray Smith, it's all yours. Thank you, Chairman Duggar. I can take this mask off, I hope. Welcome everyone. I guess you can see me, I just can't see you. <laughs> I want to thank Kenneth and the Chamber Board for putting this on every year. I think it gets better and better every time we have one, even though we're not in person. Uh, I miss that, but uh, this has been a great opportunity for us to communicate with our residents. Uh, i also like to thank Robin Battle, Celso Martinez, Arlen Jefferson, Carolyn Coons, and their staff for putting this presentation together for me. Uh, there's so much data, I'm probably not going to get to all of it, but uh, like Kenneth said, it will be on the website, and uh, you can pick up some of the diagrams and graphs and uh, all the good stuff. Um, let's see. First, I'd like to introduce... Uh, my teammates, uh, we have Councilman Megs Miller, uh, Jeff Hodges, Mayor Pro Tem, Jason Dixon, then myself, Deputy Mayor Pro Tem, Craig Andres. <clears throat> we have Marcus Ray and our newest members, Amy Bartley. Now what I want you to do sometime in the next day or so is go to our website and write down every one of their cell phone numbers. So when you get upset, I want you to call one of them, not me. Uh, if you get happy, please call me. I want to hear about it. But uh, actually, the first person you ought to call is Amy. She's the newest one on council, and she'd enjoy to take your call. <laughs> um, you know, we've been in a difficult time uh, Everybody knows that, we had the pandemic, uh, we've had a financial crisis which was um, caused by the pandemic. Uh, there's been a lot of civil unrest, political unrest. Basically, it's been a big mess, but we're gonna get through it. 
being in Prosper, uh, we think that uh, we're lucky here that we have quite a bit more going on for us than some of the other communities. Uh, we were uh, really prepared for this. We didn't expect it, but um, we have a few tight wads on council that uh, uh, save a lot of money. So we haven't been able, had to have borrowed against any of our funds. So we're in good fiscal shape. Um, let's see. Uh, our response to the COVID-19, uh, I think it hit this country so fast. Everybody was trying to figure out what to do. Uh, our staff and council put a lot of things in place. Our fire and police department uh, were, are, you know, they're, they're top in the state. And we encouraged people to uh, wear masks, social distance, wash your hands, bathe in disinfectant. I mean, it, it just, there's so many things we, we've asked everybody to do and, and you've done it and we appreciate that. And I think it's kept our numbers down not only for our counties, we're in Denton and Collin County, but also for our community. Um, here are some numbers. Um, I'm not gonna read all of them. I'm sure you're excited about that. Um, but there's been quite a few hospitalizations, as you can see. Um, we've uh, prosperous, Trauma service area is about 23% hospitalizations, and we're trying to get that down uh, less than 15%. Uh, that's where the governor likes to see that. Um, you know, this was, uh, our numbers were down slightly a week ago, but we'll take any improvement. Um, the vaccine, hopefully you're signed up or you received your vaccine. There's the 1A, the 1B. Uh, I actually got mine a week ago tonight, um, the first dose. Uh, and so far, I felt great, except for 24 hours after the dose, I had a little fever, but uh, right now, uh, that doesn't mean you can't social distance. I mean, you gotta wear your mask and continue to do that. Uh, but I always encourage everyone to get signed up and get in there and, and get a vaccine. Um, the, our COVID response team uh, has been awesome. We've had uh, weekly meetings they, uh, here at the town hall and they're getting out the data to council, uh, keeping us in the loop. We've tried to relay as much information as you can to you, the residents, uh, and hopefully you will stay inside and stay safe unless it's necessary uh, to go out. Uh, but please wear a mask when you do. Um, I don't have mine on because I, you couldn't hear me. So for the record, before you start posting on me, like you did a year ago uh, when I didn't have a mask on in Walmart. <laughs> I was in there buying one. Uh, anyway, um, uh, I want to thank our uh, town hall staff, the IT uh, division, Lee over there. Uh, they've been great. They've been able to let a lot of our employees work from home. Uh, we've uh, been able to get enough thermometers and hand sanitizer and masks to keep everybody. We've had a couple of outbreaks, but uh, I think they've been quite reduced because of the following the safety guidelines. Um, here you can see uh, some of our positive tests for employees. And I guess someone said we were gonna have, the winter was gonna have a little rise. And you can see by this chart we did. But uh, so far in January, there's only uh, three or four of, so hopefully that trend will continue to go down. Um, here's another chart. As you can see, the police and fire you know, they're out there amongst everybody. And uh, they don't know if somebody's carrying COVID-19 or not. So they're the most vulnerable. And that's why their stats are up uh, a little bit higher there. Uh, in the beginning, we had a lot of communication with you. Uh, hopefully, 
with all the websites and social media sites, you were able to uh, hear us, hear our warnings, uh, hear our instructions. Um, we're just trying to keep you safe. That's a big deal for our council. Uh, safety is a core value. We spend quite a bit of money on our police and fire, but you know, this COVID crisis, uh, I think they handled quite well. And um, uh, next time you see them, please pat them on the back. Um, this was a campaign that we put together. Um, as you can see, they wrote out, wear a mask, wash your hands. But, uh, you know, I've had a few concussions. I had to put some pictures on there for me to figure it out. So hopefully you all got the uh, campaign and bought into it. Our community support and uh, relief efforts, uh, the town was uh, trying to help those uh, that were kind of down on their luck. So uh, we set aside $25,000 and let Cornerstone uh, qualify the folks that really needed help. I mean, if the water was about to be turned off, uh, we would absorb the bill, and we did that for as many residents as we could up to the $25,000. Um, so I thought that was a great uh, opportunity. Um, with the development community, we waived a few permit fees. Um, I love our developers, but they always think our fees are too high, so hopefully this helped them a little bit. Um, we had another charitable giving campaign. Uh, as you can see, uh, we sponsor these nonprofit organizations and we always encourage you to, to continue to give. Uh, we partnered with uh, the town, the chamber, the Rotary Club and uh, Atmos Energy. And we were able to raise 125,000 for these nonprofits. Um, the We Prosper Together campaign, this was uh, grants for small businesses. Uh, we distributed 102,000 uh, to 19 prosper businesses and uh, tried to help them keep the doors open and their employees paid. Um, managing a fast growing community. In 2020, we were on fire. Uh, even though we had a pandemic, they were still uh, building quite a few uh, homes and even uh, commercial areas. Uh oh, did I mess up? Okay. Uh, we had the uh, bond election. Appreciate everybody getting out that voted in favor of this. It passed. Uh, a lot of it was for public safety, actually. Um, 30 million, 30 million for parks and rec. Uh, most of it was 150 million that went to our uh, streets. We need infrastructure and we appreciate your support. Um, this isn't gonna happen overnight. So next month, please don't call me and ask me where the park is or that road that we were gonna build. It's, it's on the way. Um, We always like to be good stewards of our money. Um, that's one of our core values, and uh, we think we're fiscally responsible. And as you can see on the next slide, quite a few awards the finance department received. I'm not gonna read them, I just wanna highlight that the, the, the amount of years, nine years for the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financing and Reporting, seven years, three years, two years, two years. Uh, this is awesome. And, uh, you know, I don't get credit for this. This is something that Betty Pamplin should get credit for. She's our finance director. Uh, and her and her staff is uh, continually to be very responsible with, our, with your tax dollars. Um, major grant awards. There's a couple of pages here. Uh, you can see the police and fire. Uh, here, and then you got more with police and fire, parks and engineering. 
Uh, Kent Bauer is our grant writer. Uh, he does a tremendous job, as you can see, uh, over $4 million in this fiscal year, which is about halfway through that we've received in grants. So uh, next time you see Kent, you give him a big pat on the back. Uh, bond rating, uh, the Moody's, we have a AA1 and then Standard & Poor, AA+. That's the second highest on each one of those ratings. Um, what that means is when we go shop and sell the bonds, we get a lower interest rate, which helps save money uh, all the way across the board. Um, now our development update. Uh, <laughs> we're <laughs> Homes, I mean, uh, houses. We, we, we set a record this year. In a pandemic, we issued over 1,100 permits. That's huge. Uh, people are still out there buying homes and they wanna to come to Prosper, Texas. And I think one of the biggest reasons is the Prosper Independent School District. I think that uh, you just heard from the superintendent. Um, they got great leadership, uh, the school board, uh, the superintendent and everybody, the teachers, uh, they're awesome, and uh, I think that's a, a main reason that so many permits are being uh, pulled. Um, let's see. And, and <laughs> obviously there's some challenges. You have a shortage of lots. Uh, when everybody's out there buying homes, of course the interest rates have been low. Um, uh, materials are low, labor shortage is low, so uh, developers are telling me they can't put lots on the ground fast enough for their builders. The builders are bugging them. You know, they got to build homes. There's a lot of demand right now. Uh, so I think you'll probably continue to see those uh, permit numbers uh, high. Uh, one of our partners, uh, the gates of Prosper phase two, they did the gates phase one. This is at uh, 380 in Preston. Most of you are familiar with this uh, development. Uh, the Jones family uh, started developing here years ago and they did, ended up starting phase one on the east side of Preston. And uh, they are now under construction. What you see on the um, screen is phase two. Uh, they're gonna have several more phases, uh, but I asked them to give me a approximate how much value is on the ground on both sides right now. And they guessed about 150 million. Now, where a lot of people were shutting down and pulling in the reins and closing the doors, they continued to spend the money and invest in our community. And uh, we are very thankful for that. Also, they have a community, it's a residential community called Star Trail. Uh, they've sold about 500 homes over there and they estimate that value, taxable value on the ground is over 300 million. Uh, that's huge and that, that'll help you get through a pandemic. I'd also call my friends at Winsong Ranch, another huge development. Uh, primarily residential. There is a commercial piece where we're gonna have a Home Depot. I think I got a slide in a minute. Uh, is being built, but you've got a Kroger Center there. But just for the residential piece, uh, they uh, put an additional 207 million uh, on the ground this past year. And <clears throat> prior to that, when they started in 2014, uh, year to date, they have 660 million plus the 207 million. You're getting close to a billion dollars over there. And we want to thank them uh, and appreciate them staying in our community. Um, Cook Children's Hospital has been uh, building a site. Um, they're a tremendous hospital for kids. Uh, this brings in a lot more job opportunities, which a lot of those doctors are buying homes in our community and their kids are going to uh, our schools. 
Children's Health also bought uh, a site at the Tollway and uh, 380 on the northwest corner. Uh, they're trying to uh, start their project. So that'll be additional jobs, uh, additional medical for uh, children and our kids. And uh, I think this is gonna be a huge opportunity for us. Uh, these hospitals have invested in our community. I know they made a little investment on the stadium, the new stadium up on Frontier Parkway. Uh, this is the Home Depot I was uh, mentioning earlier. Uh, uh, the local option election. Um, this is the, the, the legal sale of alcoholic beverages, off-premise consumption, and then the legal sale of beverages and restaurants. Uh, real quick, the way it works, if you weren't annexed in 2006 and we had a vote then for beer wine, then if you weren't annexed, you don't have that right to uh, serve or sell. Uh, the uh, alcohol uh, was packaged liquor, and so both of those passed. Um, however, uh, the Texas Alcohol and Beverage Commission regulates this, so if you want to ask me some detailed questions about it, um, they may be a better resource. I do know that uh, you have to be within I think 300 feet of a school, uh, daycare center, church. Um, so uh, there is some regulations in place. Uh, however, we've had uh, three applications uh, so far. Uh, our hike and bike trail master plan, we approved in uh, November. 22 miles of hike and bike. Dudley's excited about this. Uh, the downtown master plan, the EDC, and the town of Prosper agreed to share the cost of uh, doing a new plan. Uh, we've gotten uh, citizens involved, uh, the development community involved, ones that are looking at moving to our downtown and the ones that are existing there. So hopefully this will be done and revitalize that area. Um, here's a monthly development report. Um, I highly recommend uh, pulling this every month so you can, uh, you can be the smartest one in your neighborhood. Uh, this has a lots and lots and lots of information. Uh, so you'll be in the know on the events in Prosper. Now this is uh, some 2020 completed projects. Uh, you recognize this as the service roads of the North Dallas Tollway. Uh, the south side opened last year. You see that big long stretch of dirt and grass in the center between those two lanes. That's the future center lanes and we hope and anticipate those will be completed uh, by 2026. You might think that's a long time, but uh, it's not. It's, it's just around the corner. And we do appreciate, again, supporting the, the road bond uh, election. Some of our funds have, have uh, helped with this project, but it's primarily the tollway and uh, the county. Um, New traffic signals, some completed projects. I'm not gonna read these. You can go look at it a little later. Uh, talked about the gates, the phase two infrastructure. These are some of the roads being built um, over there. Um, some completed projects, the fish trap elevated storage tank. Uh, Everybody on the west side is going to have a lot of water pressure. I believe they filled that tank. Or they're filling it this month. That's what I've been told. Um, this is the uh, overpass under construction. Uh, 
the it's the North Dallas Tollway that's going over 380. It's of course a lot further along than this picture, but uh, everybody's familiar with that. We hope that it's completed. Uh, I think they're projecting 23, but as fast as they're moving, it may be 22, um, depending on weather. Um, some more new construction. Uh, there's Fish Trap, Custer 38 expansion on the Denton side. I mean, there's just, we're under, we're under construction, just like the school. They're building a lot of schools. We're building a lot of roads and infrastructure. Uh, Frontier Parkway. Uh, this is the, the Tollway DNT to Preston Road. Is, and then this is a cool video. I think. Oh, there it is. I thought it was going to be on, <laughs> be on my screen. It's over there. That's what it's going to look like. Uh, probably 23 to 2023. Uh, believe me, I want this road built as fast as possible because. The first year the stadium was open, 19, I got a lot of colorful emails and text messages about the traffic. Uh, actually, some of them were funny. But, uh, uh, and then the COVID kind of slowed down some of that email traffic because the regulation and who could go watch the games, uh, they had to keep a minimal capacity. So. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, and that's the bridge going over the railroad there. But this has been a project with the county and the city of Salina, and the county is uh, in charge of this project. So leave our guys alone up here at Town Hall. Uh, call the Collin County uh, engineers if you have some concerns. <laughs> As you can see, that's a long road and that's a lot of money. There's Preston. Okay, this slide uh, I like to put in here. Our town council and our staff have a lot of good relationships with North Texas Council of Governments, TxDOT, uh, our county commissioners and judge and we are constantly negotiating, begging for money. And as you can see, uh, y'all can read this later, but there's been over $1 billion in regional infrastructure put in Prosper that we didn't have to pay for. So, uh, and that includes the Custer Road project that hadn't been completed, obviously. They've been relocating utilities and moving power lines and and cutting trees, but uh, once that's completed, there's going to be a uh, billion dollars, and I'll let you uh, take that slide or print it and read it uh, later. The uh, bypass that had a lot of uh, discussion and publicity last year, uh, it's, it's still going on. Matter of fact, TxDOT's meeting tonight, and some of the residents wanted me to cancel this and delay it, but uh, I couldn't do that to my good friends at the school district. So <laughs> we're moving ahead. And I think both of them are being recorded so you can watch either one. Uh, but we are uh, still discussing with TxDOT uh, what to do. Uh, we don't mind the bypass. We just want McKinney to keep it in McKinney. I mean, I don't see how complicated that is. But uh, you get a lot of entities involved and a uh, few people uh, that are really 
uh, aggressive and wanting to see this happen through Prosper, um, I, I don't understand it. But we're we got our gloves on and we're we're battling and, and trying to. Uh, I mean, we passed five resolutions. You know, you should only need one. And if uh, if if I guess if they're not understanding it, we'll have to pass a sixth one. Um, but we are. Uh, definitely trying to keep the bypass on the McKinney side. Uh, public safety, it's another one of our core values. Here's our first ladder truck that went operational. Um, that's an awesome piece of equipment. I've been up in the bucket and I tell you what, fighting a fire from up there, uh, these guys, it's gotta be awesome for them to help save more lives and uh, maybe reduce the damage of some of the buildings. And I think we're gonna get some multi-story, additional multi-story buildings over the next few years. So we're gonna need this truck. Um, we also had a replacement, an engine that uh, was done with some grant money. And thanks Kent for that. Uh, this is the Texas Fire Chiefs Association Best Practices Recognition. Uh, our firefighters are uh, awesome. I would say second to none, but Dr. Ferguson's husband's a firefighter in Frisco and I don't wanna make her mad. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, last year I gave Stuart a hard time and uh, some people think I went a little overboard. So uh, I wrote down a couple of things about Stuart that, you know, he's a great friend and he's got a good sense of humor. Kids love him. Um, adults love him too. I mean, he just, he, he comes by and picks me up on National Night Out. We go out and all the neighborhoods we hit, everybody knows him. They don't know who I am, so I just hang out in the shadow. And, and, and then I finally figured out, I had to get these little red plastic hats, start handing them out to the kids and they, you know, they come talk to me. <laughs> but Stuart has pulled me out of ditches, you know, when there's been ice storms and he's been up all night working and instead of sending somebody over, he did it himself. Uh, uh, he, he just, he's just a top notch chief, all of his uh, men and women that work for him, uh, love him. We think he has the biggest heart in, in our community. And uh, Stuart, uh, you're, you're one of a kind, you're a great leader, and we're glad to have you here. Hopefully you're watching. Um, this is uh, Prosper Fire and Rescue, uh, American Heart Association Life, Lifeline uh, Award, the silver. Uh, Stuart told me they didn't, that was the highest award that they went this year. Next year, they're gonna win the gold. So the pressure's on there, Stuart. <laughs> uh, Texas Chief, uh, Police Chiefs Association recognition from 17 to 21. I mean, this is every year. Uh, we got another great one. Uh, uh, Chief Kowalski, the police department. Um, as you know, there's been a lot of things going on around the country. But Chief Kowalski, I don't believe the way he hires and trains and the discipline he instills in his men and women, uh, I don't think you'll see any of those issues in Prosper, Texas. He's a great leader. And we're proud to have him here. Uh, so proud we bought him a station. <laughs> uh, this is the new uh, police and fire and dispatch, I mean, police dispatch um, station. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful building. Uh, I'd recommend you visit uh, on your own if they'll let you look around or at least drive over there safety way. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful facility. Uh, these uh, police officers deserve this. They've worked hard. They've been shoehorned in in multiple buildings uh, that, you know, some of them 80, 90 years old. And uh, we, 
you know, really appreciated their attitude and hanging in there with us till we got this built and we got it all decked out for them. And the positive news is I only have to build one of these. We have to build multiple fire stations, right, Stuart? <laughs> uh, another thing I want to point out, we, you know, a lot of people are talking about defunding police. I mean, that's just silly to me. But here, you know, we've got a $16 million building. Uh, we gave a budget for seven more uh, police officers in different positions to hire. Um, we love our police department, and we think safety is a key issue. Uh, the Prosper ISD uh, has their own police department, and they work so well together. And I think it avoids and a lot of drama that could have happened uh, in other school districts could have happened here, but we've got uh, two different associations. I think people are going to leave us alone, or at least uh, they ought to, because they work hand in hand. And again, I can't say enough how much we work with the Prosper School District uh, on, on buying sites, you know, and having a park next door like the original high school. Uh, we bought all that as, as in a partnership with them. So it, it's just great to have the leadership of the school district here. Uh, uh, community identity. Um, well, this is my favorite slide. I always make them put this on any presentation. Uh, the council uh, decided we need to put in God we trust on our town vehicles. As you can see, this is on a police car and a fire truck. Um, we voted on this six, seven years ago. And uh, we just think it's important that uh, people know when they move to Prosper that we believe in God. and. Uh, we trust in God, and he guides our way, and, you know, the government, you know, wants to mess with where we can pray and do certain things, so we'll have an annual event. Oh, that's later. <laughs> I thought that was the next slide. Uh, have an annual uh, prayer uh, event, but um, trusting in God, that's, you know, there's not a better way, and when you see these on the back of vehicles, um, uh, it should give you some, some comfort and some peace. Uh, we had an idea from, uh, well, there's the prayer event. I'm going to give Holly Havens credit for the idea, lighting our town red and blue, and this was an uh, uh, entire month that uh, we had, we encouraged residents to put uh, red bulbs in their outdoor lights and then for the police the the blue bulbs I don't think you could find a red or blue bulb within a hundred miles during those two weeks uh, of this area everybody wanted to participate and, and it was just a great event honoring uh, our safety uh, this is the national uh, prayer event uh, as you can see there's room for more of you next year uh, HOA President's Meeting, um, we started this, and I think it's been great. Uh, we, we meet quarterly. Uh, here lately, we've been on Zoom, but uh, it's, it's information we can share with the presidents, and hopefully they go back and share with their neighborhoods. Um, then we find out about issues before they bubble up too quick, and a lot of times staff can take care of it uh, before it becomes uh, a bigger issue. So I really enjoyed these, and uh, there's not any shy and bashful presidents. They all have a lot of things on their mind, and we appreciate that because we won't know unless they tell us. Now I've got the Mayor's Fitness Challenge slide. I'm a big health nut, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, uh, I may have mentioned I had heart surgery and I've had a stroke and, you know, fitness, I think, saved my life. So uh, with the Parks and Rec uh, running this program, 
Uh, we've got a challenge. You can go out on, on the online or go to the Parks and Rec uh, site, and uh, I want you to run, walk, uh, crawl 100 miles in a three-month period. Started this last week, and it runs through uh, April. And uh, if you're a big biker, then I challenge you to go 300 miles uh, because you're sitting down. So you should go further. <laughs> but I, I always encourage people to do this. Uh, they get in the habit, and this is the time of the year where uh, – you know, everybody makes their New Year's resolution with fitness, with eating right, and by 45 days, only 2% are still on their fitness and eating right. So this is, gives you a reason and excuse to crank it back up. So I look forward to all the applications or the completion uh, documents that get sent in to the parks. Um, stay connected. Uh, this is just about every way you can be connected. Uh, this is Robin Battle. She, she's over all our communication and uh, has all these things set up. Some of them I have to get my grandkids to show me how to use, but uh, I don't want to ever hear from anybody who said they didn't know because with all these opportunities to get information and data, um, you should, you should be in the loop and you should uh, know what's going on in your community. Um, uh, this is another, we prosper together in the Prosper Education Foundation. Uh, I'm asking for you to donate to them. Uh, this is so important, uh, especially to the kids in the foundation that may not have an opportunity. Uh, to go to college, and uh, this is a huge deal for them. And of course, our nonprofits uh, are always needing additional funds. Uh, I encourage everyone again to stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, uh, you know, wear your mask, you know, continue to rub your hands with the disinfectant. Um, you know, we're going to get through this. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen and how many shots we have to get, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, Prosper's going to come out on top because we work together, we live together. Uh, we're in an environment that we, you know, we win together. Uh, we've won so many things in sporting events. You know, I, I showed the finance department what they've won. That's, that's just what we do here in Prosper. So thank you very much and look forward to your questions. Kenneth, back to you, sir. Thank you, Mayor Smith. Also, don't forget, I still want everybody to make sure they hit the like and react on, on the page. Let us all know that you're out there watching. Uh, right now, we're going to have some questions for Dr. Ferguson. You can still submit questions via the email to soc at prospertx.gov. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can, but if we don't get to it, staff will respond to your emails. So here's the number one question that I've seen to have for Dr. Ferguson. What is Dr. Watkins doing nowadays? Enjoying life and relaxing. Uh, no, actually, Dr. Watkins has still been very involved in the school district, and he's acted as a direct support for me, which has just been phenomenal to be able to pick his brain and really ask him about all things Prosper ISD. So it's been nice to have him around to be able to, to visit with and to really um, connect with. But it also has been extremely nice to see him so relaxed and really enjoying his retirement. Well deserved. Next question is when when will Stuber Elementary get relief? I believe current attendance is over a thousand and students and it still seems to be growing. 
You are correct, whoever submitted that question. We are growing very rapidly on the west side of the district, um, Winsong, certainly that area, but Stuber, because uh, Artesia still continues to build as a subdivision, as well as Star Trail is now also pretty rapid on the ground with growth and development. So to answer that question, we are looking at some potential zoning with Bryan Elementary that may give some relief. We've got one of the options on the table that would give some relief to Stuber Elementary, but our next elementary to be built will actually go in Star Trail, so that will be elementary number 15. So definitely relief when that comes about, but we are gonna try to give some relief Relief with that zoning um, but please know as soon as that zoning happens more houses are hitting the ground which then it just fills right back up so but we we are and do have plans to get relief in place dr. Ferguson what are the next high school and middle schools being planned in the timelines for prosper Okay, so next high school will be located on First Street, and that will actually be high school number three. And as I said earlier, we will break ground on that building uh, this fall. So August, September will break ground, and then that will open in 2024. Our next location for a high school, by all trends that are happening not right now with growth, will take us over to the west side of the district because we're going to need relief in a high school over at the Windsong area. Area. And we do have a site, uh, thanks to David Blum and his group. Um, and so we'll be looking at trying to build a high school site over on the Windsong west side of the district. And that would be high school four. Dr. Ferguson, can you speak to the efforts that are being made to ensure that our teacher and principal population is reflective of the demographics of the district? Absolutely. Our Prosper ISD school board, along with uh, hundreds of individuals, contributed to our Prosper ISD strategic plan and very intentionally placed, purposely placed, was really how would we improve our hiring practices. It's, research shows that it's very important for students to see educators and leaders who look like them. And so we are committed to that. We've made a, a significant dent in that with hiring of um, different leaders leaders within the district as well as teachers and staff. But I'm going to tell you, this is kind of the troubling thing with when you're trying to hire a diverse staff because you really need to look all the way back down the pipeline to go, okay, who went into a teacher prep program at the university level? What typically, or the person, the design of a person who typically gets into a teacher prep program is a white female. And so one of the things that we can do intentionally in Prosper ISD, we have our Ready, Set, Teach program, which is a, a prep program for our high school students making their way into the potential education field. And we have that at both Rock Hill High School and Prosper High School. And we need to be recruiting students who represent diversity to come into that program so that we can change that dynamic. That's how you make change. It's not hoping for or wishing for something after the fact. It's looking at when does that begin and then what can we do about that to make that change occur. So we will be working directly with Prosper High School as well as Rock Hill High School to really recruit because we're in the middle of course selection and we want students getting in that program, especially our students that represent a level of diversity because we want those students to go on to get that degree and then come back to Prosper to teach. With that, will training for cultural responsiveness be required training for all the teachers in the Prosper ISD? So very excited, and I, those of you who've been with us for at least several years, we have committed to that training and really trying to build capacity in all of our staff. Dr. Kimberly McLeod, we've been working with her directly, and she has come in and we've actually trained all leaders um, all of our kind of middle level support as far as curriculum, uh, support people, English as a second language specialist, gift and talented specialist, um, our special education itinerant staff, and then I was fearful that we weren't going to be able to get that training to teachers, although that was in our plan for the beginning of the year. And uh, Dr. McLeod, who's just absolutely phenomenal, she said, I, I can do it, and I can do it virtually. And I, my question was, how impactful will it be? And I was uh, 
fortunate to be able to sit in to her virtual sessions. So we actually had every single teacher um, and staff member trained in cultural responsiveness at all of the elementary campuses, all of our middle school campuses, and all of our high school campuses. And that was all completed by September 4th, which was just a, a huge uh, movement in the right direction when we look at creating a more culturally responsive staff for our students to truly be embraced with all of the differences that they come to the table with, whether that's um, ethnicity or a special need or or, um, a second language, whatever it might be. That's amazing, Dr. Ferguson. How is Prosper ISD anticipating classroom growth? What are y'all doing? So we work extremely, extremely closely with um, a demographer, and we actually have two demographers that we work with so that they're really talking about all of the subdivisions that are coming, and then we also get the breakdown. So those numbers that I shared with you earlier were actually directly from our demographer when they're looking at the growth and the impact that's happening within Prosper ISD. They've continued to show that they're pretty cr close on their projections. Now, some of you may say, well, gosh, but my first grade classroom is larger or my students in a class where there's more students than what I was expecting. The problem is, is that we never know if a ton of first graders are going to move in or if it's going to be a ton of seventh graders that move in. So that's really kind of that dynamic that you don't have full control over because when we get numbers, it's a whole number and then you start dividing to figure out how many sections you would need, how many teachers you would need. But the demographer's kind of baseline is that there's 1.3 children in each of the homes within Prosper ISD. So that tends to be kind of their, their uh, formula for figuring out how many students. And it actually has served us pretty well because they've been pretty close. But again, they can't determine if it's a first grader or a seventh grader. Dr. Ferguson, is there a plan to rezone middle school so that the entire middle school will go to the same high school? For example, right now, Rogers splits both Rock Hill and Prosper High. Absolutely, and that's that's part of being in a growing district. So our elementaries actually were in this mode of being split at um, not too long ago. Now with growth, with development, our elementaries have moved forward with the exception of say a dual language program because those students are gonna go where that program is but as far as zoning. So when we look at what elementaries go to what middle schools, there's a clean line. We're now in the process of trying to work that dynamic out of the middle schools, because you are right, Rogers does split currently, but we want to get to a true feeder pattern where the students go that are sitting at Rogers, then they're either going to PHS, High School 3, or Rock Hill. Um, just as we see with Reynolds and Rushing, they all those two campuses go to Prosper High School. Um, and then, of course, Hayes goes directly to uh, Rock Hill High School. So we will get to that point, I guarantee you, and we want that. And we actually have our assistant principals. They sit in cadre feeder patterns to our best guess so that they're really sharing a common language amongst one another from elementary, middle to high school. So this question is from Kenneth Duggar. So I moved to Prosper in 2001. There was Rucker, there was the middle school, and Reynolds was the new high school when I moved here. That's three schools. Prosper had a little over 3,000 people or right at 3,000 people. How many schools, high schools, middle schools, elementary are now? What's the projected build out? So currently right now, as I shared in the presentation, we have 12 elementary schools, soon to be 14 elementary schools with the addition of the two. Um, we have four middle schools and two high schools. At build out, you're gonna be at 25 to 30 elementaries. Um, so that's give or take, depending on what's happening with growth development numbers. And then our middle schools will be sitting around 11 to 13 middle schools. And then we're probably looking anywhere from a potential of probably about five to six high schools at final build out. And the total student population at build out, um, what they're telling us is we'll be around the 50,000 mark for total student population in Prosper ISD. That's amazing. That's more, that's like... 10 times the number of people that lived in Prosper when I moved to Prosper. Uh, I have time for one more question for you. What is new for special education in Prosper ISD? So I'm very excited. Uh, we have 
actually a family resource center, and I want to make sure that I'm sharing this, and I, I failed to put that in the presentation, although it should have been, because it's such a shining star, and it's such a great support for our special education students and their families, but also all families. So at Rock Hill High School, we have a family resource center, and there are two fabulous staff members who are actually, they staff that room, and we allow parents to come in to volunteer in that room, but also to be able to check out to get different supports that they may need for if their child, say for example, is struggling with sensory integration or maybe they need uh, maybe some social skills or social supports. There's also just games to check out. There's books to check out. Um, it's just a great resource for our families. So I hope that our families get a chance to really tap into that resource. The other thing that we have at, at Prosper High School in the area of special needs is our Prepare to Prosper program. And those of you who heard about um, or maybe attended graduation last year, you heard about students who were going to Prepare to Prosper. And my own family was like, hey, there were quite a few kids who went to Prepare to Prosper. So what is that? And so that is a fabulous program. Those are our students that are eight, they're in our 18 plus program and they're learning life skills to transition them to the next level. So rather that's working um, maybe at a grocery store or maybe at one of our local restaurants, Julia Chalker heads that program up and oversees it and she does absolutely a phenomenal job because again, just like what I was talking about, we want opportunities for all of our students and so we have to look at every single student and go, what is it that we can do for them? What can we give them? What skills can we provide them? So the Prepare to Prosper program is absolutely fantastic and then also, um, like I said, that Family Resource Center phenomenal support and we've gotten really great reviews and feedback from different families that have been there and I actually had a chance to take uh, Friends of Texas Public Schools to our Family Resource Center actually last week and they were blown away with what we were doing and the, the services we were providing to our families, specifically our families with students of special needs. Thank you Dr. Ferguson. Uh, I would ask everybody to give Dr. Ferguson a big hand, but we can't do that. So what I'm going to ask you to do is react with a big heart and let her know how much we appreciate her and the Prosper ISD. I'd like to ask Mayor Smith to come up and join me. I've got some questions for you that I've received. You've got the podium. A town council member a couple of years ago mentioned a retirement community is being planned for the land behind the car dealerships. This would include independent living and assisted living facilities. Is this still planned and when will this be built? Uh, I think they still have plans to do it. They, they came in, we looked at the facility they built over in Allen, over by the water tower on 75. It was a nice facility. Uh, we rezoned it and then they went away. So. I don't know if they didn't get their financing put together uh, or, or what the issues were, but uh, as of now, they haven't brought in a plat uh, to begin developing. Okay, thank you. So also a question about what's going on in Prosper. Prosper Trail and Preston Road. What's planned to go in across from Kroger at Preston Road and Prosper Trail? Uh, there's a bank there. I don't know what else is planned. They have uh, a request to rezone it to uh, retail uses. Uh, they have some office uses mixed in over there, and uh, their entire property could support about 120,000 square foot grocery store if they ever wanted to build one. Um, we haven't received any plans for the development. I know they've been back and forth with the different uh, tenants, but we haven't been aware of any of those. Thank you, Ray. I keep on hearing, and I see several people have asked, how can they find out about what new businesses are going in at the Gates of Prosper? Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> what happened years, a few years back is somebody posted something on Facebook. That's why I said that. Uh, uh, actually, we probably are some of the last to know, but we, in our development report, I mentioned during the uh, presentation, uh, look at their, look at that report every month and see if there's any uh, new 
uh, application submittals, and they'll have their names on them, so you can, that's the best way to find out, other than rumors and word of mouth. When is a bridge over 380, the tollway bridge, going to be complete? You may have mentioned it, so this yeah. is a two-part question for you. Okay. When's the bridge going to be completed? And I want to know what's going in right there on the northwest corner of 380 in the tollway. Northwest corner. Matthew uh, Southwest property. Yeah. Um, the bridge is slated to be completed in sometime in 2023. Uh, as fast as they're moving, if they keep good weather, uh, we outside chance it could be completed in 2022, but I don't want to promise that. The schedule is for 2023. The northwest corner, um, as you know, Matthew sold off 72 acres there. Uh, they're going to build the children's hospital. However, around the outside of the property, along the towway and along the north side, of their land, uh, hopefully they'll partner with a developer and possibly build some hotels or some offices uh, for future development. Um, I've seen one design where they had a sky bridge for a hotel going into one of the ho hospital buildings. So uh, parents that are worried about their kids don't have to get in weather related issues, they can go across. But uh, I don't know how far in the future that's going to be. Okay, thank you, Ray. Uh, has the town received any CARES Act funds? And what did you do with the money, or what did the town do with the money if they received it? Uh, yes, we received over a million dollars, and it's sitting in my bank. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the, we've bought quite a bit of equipment. Uh, we're allowed to... Uh, spend the money, uh, COVID-related issues, social distancing. Um, we've paid a lot of overtime. Um, we've, uh, it, it's gone out to a, a lot of our police and fire that have uh, uh, been in quarantine. And uh, we actually received another uh, $600,000 in December for public safety payroll expenses. So uh, we, we received quite a bit of money, but it's, it, it's, it's out there working for the people that are in need. What's going on right now in the plan for bringing better broadband company to Ray Mills? Um, Ray Mills is, is on the list of uh, spots that need help. I know we have a broadband committee of uh, three or four, and we are trying, or there's probably more, there's three councilmen and then some other uh, citizens. And we know there's a need, uh, the speed is slow uh, in a lot of areas, just not there, but they're on our list. And we, when we talked, I know Harlan talks to AT&T and uh, Sudden Link, and he tells them, hey, you know, you gotta get, th this is bad in these certain areas, and they're on that list. What effect will the alcohol election have on the town? Uh, I don't really know. I think, as I mentioned in my presentation, there were three applications approved. Uh, you know, there's only so much support of that, uh, that people, I think a lot of it is going to come from outside of Prosper, the uh, purchasers of alcohol. Um, uh, you know, they're driving, I guess, to Little Elm or Plano or somewhere. Um, maybe even Gunner. I think they have a site. On the positive side, uh, I think it gives us opportunities to have hotel to compete with Frisco. Uh, they've got, um, you know, the beer, wine, and liquor, and hotels, and uh, on the south side. So that gives us another notch in our belt to compete with them to try to get a hotel uh, that can serve the alcohol uh, that may not have been in the annexation area and then other restaurants and hopefully high-end restaurants. So that's what I'm looking for. That'd be awesome. One final question. Uh, what's the current population of the town of Prosper? Uh, according to my sources, approximately 31,100 people and growing every day. Uh, that was yesterday, so we probably didn't have any family to move. 
Yeah, we, we get 25, 30 families a week with two and a half kids per family. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing the growth uh, that we're able to keep up with it. And that just gives, you know, our staff, uh, you got to give them all the credit because they're the ones, you know, in the day to day. Uh, and and they're, they're an amazing group. I'd like to make some closing remarks while I get Dr. Ferguson to come up. I want to thank Dr. Ferguson and Mayor Smith for sharing their time with us tonight. I want to thank you both for your service to the community. If you have any questions that we didn't get covered, the staff will reach back out to you via email, both through the town and with the ISD. Also, a special thanks goes to Carolyn Coons, communication specialist for the town of Prosper. Dr. Lee, Dr. Lee, Lee Johnson, I made you a Dr. Lee, congratulations. <laughs> IT director for the town of Prosper and Robin Battle, executive director for the community services for the town of Prosper. Also, I'm gonna remind you to please support the Prosper Education Foundation and their programs to help PISD students. Uh, that's prospereducationfoundation.org and also prospertexas.gov at We Prosper. We Prosper supports Cornerstone, Neighbors Nourishing Neighbors, Love Packs, and the Prosper Ladies Association. Also, a recording for tonight's presentation will be available via the town and PISD website and Facebook pages. I want to thank each one of y'all for watching the virtual State of the Community event. Please, everyone, stay safe and healthy. Good night. Good night, y'all. Thank y'all for joining us. Thank you.